So the next one I got is going to be called Black Barbie. This is a Netflix documentary, I believe. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Uh, so in this film, uh, when the filmmaker's 83-year-old aunt, um, Beulah Mae Mitchell asks, why not make a Barbie that looks like me? The story of the first Black Barbie begins. It's directed by uh, Lazuria Davis. And this film is pretty much the history of, you know, Barbie uh, Mattel making the first black Barbie doll, from what I understand. Not only that, they, they kind of cover um, like black dolls in general, because at one mm -hmm. time you could only get white dolls. And there's a company in California that um, the people that started Mattel um, gave gave money to for a black business to start up to kind of produce black dolls. Um, mm. I didn't take notes and, and forgetting the name of the company, but it was in Los Angeles and they didn't mind um, having some of the Mattel's people to help them get started. But mm, this, that's cool. to me, it was kind of like a history lesson, just how, you know, how toys were made, you know, for, you know, you know toys were made like, I guess, 50 years ago that you just didn't mm. have, you know, you really have that representation, you know, in dolls and stuff, you know, and I guess with, 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 with boys, we weren't really playing with action figures back then until like, I guess GI Joe came out and they didn't go into anything like that. But I, I really just thought this was interesting that, you know, but one time you just had, you know, white dolls or you make your own type dolls. But I, I, just, mm -hmm. I just really thought it was interesting. And it went, and um, it just went um, through some some of the, of the um, people that you know, like Yuta May was like one of you know she was working on the assembly line, and she just pretty much was working at um, Mattel most of her life. Um, from there, um, it's a woman named Kitty Black that ends up being one of the first designers of um, Barbie or whatever, and mm -hmm. created the first Black um, like Barbie, and it, it, it just went from there and. Just showing her life and, you know, showing some of the obstacles. What really, it, they didn't really, the thing is, um, when I was watching this, it didn't seem like they had too much resistance on, you know, getting the stuff done. At least they didn't speak about it, but um, I just think it was interesting that Mattel gave them a chance and, you know, kind of profited from um, having these, you know, dolls of color. And it just doesn't stop it, you know, the Black Barbie, it, you know, it's different. Uh, representations and everything of you know um, Barbie and yeah. everything. That's interesting because I think there was a similar story of how they ended up getting that um <clears throat> that Sunman figure. I think it was a person that was working at Mattel, mm -hmm. and you know He Man was real popular at that time, and, and they had a kid that was like, "Yo, I want a figure that looks like me." And I guess she went up to the bosses and and got them to start that Sunman line. That that I think I don't know if they were actually. In the stores, they might have got to the stores, but I remember them being in like the Ebony and the Jet magazines in the back. You could yeah, mail yeah. order like Sun Man, and then it was kind of cool of them to make those characters officially part of that um, He Man universe. And I'm kind of wondering, yeah, I'm kind of wondering if Kevin Smith will ever get around to like maybe throwing in Sun Man and, and, and hit that character into that that those animated series that he's working on. You know, that'll be kind of yeah, cool. yeah, me too. Um, but that. You, you pretty much know Mattel um, let them do that because it's in the same mold and everything, you know, as as, mm -hmm. as the E Man characters. And for, and yeah. for some reason, I want to say I had had um, had one at one point. Yeah, they just reissued Sun Man and all the uh, other smaller figures, and I actually got two of the Sun Man. Um, they're they're still pretty cheap right now. If you want to scoop one on Amazon, just for the okay, they, they got it for like twelve bucks. Um, you know, Sun Man. It's not, the, it's, not the, it's not the big Masters of the Universe line, though, is it? Um, you no, know nah, no, nah, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they're the regular size, though. They're just as big as the original, um, action figures were. Like, the, the um, grown man collector, um, or whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah. um, the Black so, Series version of those. I, I know some of those, like, Mattel, you know, He Man toys and, mm -hmm. like, Silver Hawks yeah. and, um, yeah. Actually, oh, you can get him for like right now nine ninety nine, bro. Mm. But but they but he had because he had his own you know Sun Man, but he also had his own buddies, kind of like He Man yeah, did. Yeah. And um yeah, but they also look like they got a super uh, uh, another version. I guess this looks more sleeker, like the um uh 
Masters of the Universe, Masterverse version. Yeah, that's that's what more, I'm talking about, the Masterverse. Yeah, um, type yeah. Stuff. So Masterverse is kind of cheap too, but but the the original one that's more like the old He Man mold. Uh-huh. Yeah, they got that too, man. That's the one I got. I like the OG. Okay. <laughs> He's kind of cool. That's the one I always wanted, man. I always ask, him, give me new sun man. Me and my cousins <laughs> looking at the sun man. This look cool. Get us a sun man. They ain't never get us no sun man, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I resented that. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. This yeah, last one I, we got. Uh, they get, you do a hand of the round man and told you it was told to have fun. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. 